I, Gfinity Precision Medicine offers a number of tests that people can take. So I'd like to kind of dive into some of these because, you know, a lot of our audience are taking NAD boosters, NAD precursors, or perhaps analytics. And then, so, but it's so difficult to understand how well these are doing. And so a number of your tests would be able to help with that, I think. So what I'd like to start with is, yeah, so the NAD test. So Mm -hmm. you have an NAD test. Could you introduce what that is and how that works? Sure. And we actually have two different types of NAD uh, tests. Mm. So if you look at uh, where NAD can be found inside of our body, you can put them into two major locations. Most people uh, talk about NAD that's inside the cells. Mm. Uh, when you talk about NAD. And that's what we call intracellular NAD. And, but NAD can also be secreted from the cells into the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. And we call this form of NAD the circulating NAD, or NAD, or plasma NAD, if you want. Mm-hmm. So, so the uh, uh, NAD in, inside of the blood can circulate all over the body. And this actually has very important functions that we can perhaps get into a little later. Mm. So we actually develop uh, the test that can, be, uh, that can be used to measure both intracellular and circulating NAD. For uh, intracellular NAD, we uh, uh, use blood uh, spots that are, uh, you, you can basically do a fingerprint and apply a drop of blood on a field paper. Mm. Uh, this is a type of field paper that's commonly used in uh, newborn screening uh, laboratories. So it's very easy to do. And once the blood is dry on the field paper and we apply uh, uh, NAD fixing buffer or your NAD stabilizing buffer that will um, keep the NAD stable for many days. And I think this is a really critical uh, step because NAD is very unstable, as you know. Mm. And if you don't uh, uh, stabilize the molecule, you are not going to be able to measure it. And the second compo- uh, important uh, component of our test is a high throughput uh, uh, technology that can be uh, analyzed using uh, automated uh, analyzer. So that allows us to analyze hundreds of samples a day by a single technician. And I think that's important for us to reduce the cost and really uh, make the test available to uh, you know, all consumers. And yeah, our, our goal is to uh, democratize the test so uh, everyone can do it because NAD is so important in uh, our cellular function. And, and the level of NAD varies um, uh, in different individuals and it declines with age and that's you know, widely known. So it's extremely important for us to monitor our NAD levels and especially important for us to know uh, what's a, a supplementation or some other kind of uh, NAD uh, uh, boosting uh, are actually working or not. And so for most uh, consumers that are using NAD supplementation, the intracellular asset is probably a good place to start. Um, but the circulating NAD which is much less talked about, uh, actually can play a hugely important role in various diseases and uh, conditions because uh, receptors for NAD have actually been found in certain cell types, especially neuronal cells. And that's why I think you know, NAD therapy 
has been uh, quite widely and successfully used for treating um, neurological diseases and addictions uh, and, and so on. I think the, this has a lot to do with circulating NAD rather than intracellular NAD. Okay, so a couple of questions on that. So for the intracellular NAD, you're looking at the blood. So how does the, using the blood give you the intracellular NAD levels? So what, once you apply the blood on, mm. on a field paper, yeah. and the NAD level inside of the cells uh, is actually released. Uh, and, and then we use the buffer mm. to extract the NAD out of the field paper. Because the concentration of NAD is uh, inside of the cells is mm. about uh, 60 to 80 times higher than NAD found in the plasma. So if you look at the total NAD level in, in the blood, most of the NAD comes from uh, intracellular. Mm. And the proportion that uh, comes from uh, the liquid form or the plasma of the blood is negligible. It's only you know less than uh, two percent of uh, the total NAD that you can measure from the blood. Right. Okay. So, is this one one test um, from the consumer's point of view? They apply it in one test, or or the, there's two separate tests. Yeah, two two separate tests. Oh, it's two separate so tests. the the intracellular NAD is a standalone test, mm. and the circulating NAD is a part of the aging SOS panel or part of the dual test of NAD and uh, senescence. Right. Yeah, okay. we cannot make the circulating NAD uh, uh, available as a standard known test because of the cost uh, of uh, uh, obtaining the samples. And it, to measure NAD in the plasma, you have to uh, keep the blood cool, and we'll have to receive the sample within, you know, 48 hours uh, from blood draw to, uh, to the laboratory. Right, that's for the circulating one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, it's using blood. So the NAD, so our NAD levels fluctuate during the day, I believe, right? I mean, it can be quite large. So is there a particular time that we should take this test and how much does it fluctuate? Oh, all right. So uh, I, w w with, with respect, I think I disagree with your statement a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's widely known, it's widely postulating that NAD level uh, fluctuates uh, at different time points of the day. And it's mm. a circadian uh, rhythm uh, in, in NAD concentration. Uh, I believe the evidence for that is uh, non-existent or very weak. And we have actually uh, tested that hypothesis. We don't find any evidence for that. Oh. Now, I, I must tell you that uh, NAD levels can vary from day to day or from time to time in some individuals, while the levels is very, very stable and consistent over long periods of time in most of the individuals. So I, I still don't understand why it varies in some individuals, why it's very stable in others. And that's a very interesting question to uh, research. And I, I, I don't think that that's enough necessarily any convincing evidence to, demonst to demonstrate that uh, the levels are very uh, fast. And I think it's probably due to uh, some technical variation or there could be uh, some biological variation that's not necessarily a uh, circadian variation. So, you know, we have not looked at uh, a large number of individuals yet and to give you an assessment uh, as to 
you know, in what proportion of individuals you are going to see day-to-day uh, -day variation or time-to-time -time variation versus uh, very sta uh, stable uh, concentrations uh, in terms of uh, time or days. And, you know, we, we can come back in, in a few months and I'll, I'll, I think I'll be able to give you more information on that. Okay. okay. No, so, and so, so I, you know, I mean, if we really worry about it, um, yeah, do, do the test in, in the morning. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, for myself, I, I have done the test in the morning, in, during the middle of the day, during evenings. I, my levels is extremely stable. It does not vary at all. Interesting. No, that, that's very interesting. Thank you. Okay, so once I have my NAD levels, uh, do you have, so how do I judge whether that's good or not? Uh, does it, do you have like some kind of a scale for different sexes at different ages and? Yeah, that, that's an extremely important question. And so the answer is very complicated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was hesitating. And uh, I, I think, uh, the situation is very uh, similar to vitamin D, if I can give you an example. So mm -hmm. vitamin D uh, has been measured for decades and decades. And what is the optimum level for vitamin D is still debatable today. Mm -hmm. And depending on the organizations or individuals you talk to, and the optimum level uh, what the deficiency and uh, de deficient level is largely variable. And uh, for example, uh, the American Medical Association defines only D uh, vitamin D deficiency as less than 12.5 uh, international unit. But the American uh, Association of Endocrinologists requires 50 uh, IU. Mm. So you can, you, you can see the variation. That's you know, anywhere between 12.5 and 50. And yeah. <laughs> I, 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 tell, I tell you this uh, uh, about vitamin D to put uh, the NAD uh, reference range in context, mm. because I think that this is going to be an uh, evolving situation. The more data we get and the more diseases and healthy individuals we analyze, we are going to define this threshold much, much better over time. We are. With NAD, we were probably at a level of 50, 60 years ago when uh, where, you know, vitamin D was, okay? So mm. uh, now let, let me give you the, what's important. <laughs> How we define the optimum uh, threshold. Mm. I, I believe that we want to maintain or achieve uh, the levels found in young people. And uh, you, very young people, and uh, you can define, you know, how young. Based on our evidence, we believe the levels are mostly uh, stable and high in people younger than 20 years of age. Mm -hmm. And that, that's sh that was shocking to me because we were thought that, you know, uh, adults in their 20s, 30s uh, sh should still have you know, high levels of NAD, right? That was mm. at least what I believed in. But as more data we get, and we did find a small number of uh, people in their 20s, especially in late 20s, where they have you know, declined the levels of NAD. So the threshold that we set uh, for intracellular NAD is 34 micromole. Mm -hmm. And that's the 25th percentile uh, of NAD levels in people younger than 20. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we can debate, should we uh, achieve the level uh, that's, um, you know, so high, or do you want to use the 50th percentile, or you want to use the 75th percentile, or 90th percentile, and, and so on. So, and... Um, no, I, I actually made a mistake and it should be the 75th percentile. So 75% of the individuals have more than 35, 34 micromole of NAD. Mm. Okay. So the vast majority of young people have uh, NAD levels 
uh, at 34 micromole or higher. That's the threshold that I believe we should uh, try to maintain or achieve as a minimum. I don't think this is the maximum. And so unfortunately, uh, energy levels decline with, with age. You know, by the seventh decade, we probably, the mean energy level is probably about one third of uh, uh, 34 micromole. And so, and the good news is supplementation can, can really help. And we can talk a little more about that. Excellent. So, uh, so the, just quickly, that this is intracellular. When, when you're saying, my, yes, uh, intracellular, yes, this is intracellular. Okay, uh, is it possible to have too much NAD? It is yeah. Uh, again, ex excellent question. Uh, I, I I want to use vitamin D as an example again. Mm. So there is actually a too high level for vit uh, vitamin D, and and the optimal level for most people is 50 to uh, uh, 100 mm. IU. And when it's over, and you, you can have uh, problems, ca classification, uh, immunosuppression, uh, and so on. The level, um, the higher end of uh, NAD is not defined yet. Mm. I actually don't have enough data to define the high, uh, higher end of the optimum levels. Um, but certainly there is a, um, a concentration that's going to become uh, either toxic or is going to be bad for our body. And that level is probably uh, quite hard to achieve mm. with um, uh, with the um, current supplementation. Um, but mm -hmm. I would warn uh, your listeners and viewers that, that uh, there can be a, a too high level of <laughs> NAD, especially in the case of IV infusion. Mm -hmm. And I, I have some data on, on that. And it's very pre preliminary, uh, but I think we we need to be extremely careful as to you know how much pure NAD plus we put into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And we have seen some uh, parameters that I that, that I don't like. Let's put it this mm -hmm. way. And it's a very complicated question, mm -hmm. and we, we can talk about it at a later time as yeah. we accumulate more data. This is going to be extremely important. Right. Excellent. I hope that you found the video informative. Professor Sher is very generous to offer a 10% discount code to our audience for all the tests. Please find the discount code and details in the description. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <music>